Hey, what's up guys, Sandeep here and in this video, I'll be discussing about React optimization techniques. So React optimization techniques is one of the most asked questions on interviews. So I will be discussing all the points and what, what can you say if you are being asked the same questions. The interviewer generally ask uh, like this, how do you optimize a React app or what what are the different optimization techniques that you have used in your projects? So these are the two relevant questions that interviewer generally ask about React optimization techniques. So we have the first point as dynamic inputs with help of React Lazy and React Suspense. So React Lazy and Suspense are by React itself. So you can just import them and use it on your projects. So what is basically dynamic inputs? Dynamic inputs, as, is, as the name suggests, it will be imported dynamically. Now, how will it help uh, in your application? So generally how we import uh, like a normal way, we directly import any of the file we want, right? Now what will happen uh, with dynamic imports is like, uh, so what React will do, it will dynamically import whenever it is necessary for React to load the component. So let's say you have the component within the UI. So whenever the component is required, then only the dynamic import will load the component will import and load the component hence we need react lazy and suspense for that suspense for fallback and lazy just to load it the number one point would be as i have mentioned in the screen you can see only import the component dynamically what it helps it helps you to reduce the bundle size because you're not importing all the components all the import imported components all at once you are dynamically importing them so it will help you to reduce your bundle size and it works with uh, with the help of React Lazy and Suspense. So within this example, you can see I have imported React, uh, React Lazy and Suspense from React. And you have you can see that I am importing a component called uh, like from the route called callback, and I am declaring a variable called const callback. I'm just storing it there. And if you see how I have written the lazy lazy with an anonymous function, and then we are importing it directly. And if you go into the return section, I have written a suspense. So suspense is basically nothing that fallback. So since if you know, if you are doing some something dynamically, so if anything you do dynamically is, is asynchronous. So it may take time. So for if it takes time, so we need a suspense, right? So for that, we have a fallback and I have, I have used something uh, within a div called loading. So here you can use and show any different text component or spinners you want. But this is the gist. You can see this is the structure how you should write your React lazy suspense in order to implement dynamic imports. Another small optimization that you can do uh, at a browser level that is lazy loading of images now i think i guess you all guys know about lazy loading and what is that basically we use lazy loading on images so that once you scroll down within a web page uh, or a web app it will dynamically fetch all the images and not everything at once so that is the basic idea of lazy loading of images so how we implement browser level lazy loading so basically if you see on my uh, screen uh, there is uh, within the return i have declared an image image tag within there i have source and i have a prop called loading equals to lazy so what loading equals to lazy will do it from the, at the browser level uh, whenever you are loading any kind of images once you scroll and if it is getting into the viewport it will automatically load that image and every other images won't be load at once so basically yeah, once you start scrolling it will then only load the images so this is a simple thing you can do for a browser level lazy loading of images. So the next thing you can use is use memo. So use memo is by react itself. So the, as the name suggests use memo. So memo stands for memoization and memoization is a process. You can say it is basically similar to caching mechanism where you can cache uh, a return value of a function. If, if the same input is given, so it, the function won't even run, it will return. It will return the same existing uh, output what it was returned before so basic logic is like if you're if you are providing the same input then your output is will always be the same so in a way it is it will memoize that output so which is our return value for a function now it cache your result just like i said from the second point it cache your result or return value of a function so that is the main use case of use memo so it will cache the return value uh, of the function what you want to and the, and the third one is like useful when computing a complex function. So I'll show you in a code example 
that whenever you we are trying to do something complex which may which will take a lot of time so it is better of all we memoize the whole thing if 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 certain input is given which is similar so we don't want to run the same function again and again instead we will directly show the value because our input is same do note that this will only work if you don't have any kind of side effects within the function and side effects i mean something which is random for example uh, math.random for example like uh, let's say date dot now these are random things so these are called side effects and if you if you use that within that function then it's better not to use memoization because it this value will be changing again and again so here is a small code example for use memo if you can see i have a function called expensive calculation which is taking a number and within that function i have a for loop and for the for loop i have a limit of more than 1 million so you can guess that it will run more than 1 million times and i'm increasing by one so and i'm taking that number i'm just adding it to that number and just returning that number so you by the way you can see it will run one mil, more than 1 million times so it is it will take a lot of time so let's say the number is similar every time so we or we know that it will run a million times so it's it's unnecessary to run that function so we will basically uh, some use something called use memo and cache the value of that just the return number of that function so i have used const calculation equals to use memo and i have wrapped within this expensive calculation supplied the count itself and and i have given a dependency array and where i have declared the count so what that does is basically so it's saying that whenever the count changes we will run the function note our dependency array for count is like uh, telling react like do track this variable like whatever it's coming through uh, for this function so whenever that one changes it will see the the value of that count changed so that time it will run the function if the value of the count doesn't change it will always give you the same output which is our number so just like we had use memo we have something called use callback again it is applied by react itself so it works kind of similar to use memo hook ja, just we we discussed before so the main difference between use memo and use callback is basically use memo like cache the return value of a function whereas use callback will cache the whole function itself so within whenever the javascript if you know javascript is a single threaded and it will run line by line so if if it sees that it is if the whole function is cached it will totally ignore the function uh, even though you are calling that function so that is the one main implementation that use memo has actually so it will cache the whole function and not the whole value whole value is by use memo and use callback you will use and cache the whole function itself so here is a small example of use memo callback so if you see i have declared a function called handle search item and within that search item we are using something called use callback with the search text so search text is something let's say it is coming from user input so and currently i'm just console logging uh, the search tech itself but you can implement your own uh, logic in between that and i have a dependency array called search text which basically means that if search text changes then uh, then it will rerun the whole thing else if it doesn't change then it won't even compute the whole function so you can think of like if a user is searching the same item again and again or inputting the same text again and again this function will totally ignore and it won't even execute so that's the like logic behind that the fifth way you can do is using react profiler so to get the react profiler you need to download react devtools extension which is by react itself and for this process you need to manually go and record and profile the rendering uh, rendering for the whole component tree to check and optimize uh, and minimize the number of re-renders that is happening within your application i'll show you in a clip that what it does this is a sample project that i have opened and i've been working on this so this is a sample project which has search i can search anything i can change theme and i'm working on it so i'll be profiling here and i'll be showing you how do i profile so to get the profiler you need this react dev tools currently showing i'm using the development build so here if you click on drop, drop down here profiler should be there currently i'm still i am already on profiler tab that's why it's not showing there to the right you will see this icon called start profiling click on start profiling and let's say i want to change my theme and see how many times my components got re-rendered so i will click on this 
I, now the theme got changed. Now I, what I'll do, I'll stop profiling. So now once I stopped profiling, you, you can see on your screen, it gave me a all whole timeline of whatever got re-renders. So if you see the first thing that got re-rendered only once because I have memoized it. So it is my header component. So because every color, every single color is being changed for every single component. So the first thing header got changed and it changed within 3.4 milliseconds. The second thing is Gatsby link. So this is by Gatsby default. And then we have this layout. Again, this layout also changed within the context of header itself. So if you click on each single of them, it will show you the number of times it's re-rendered. I will show you again an example. Uh, so let's say I will search something called React. Okay, I didn't profile. So I will search something React. Okay. And then I will cross it. And then I will stop the profiling. So currently if you, you it's showing it's showing the whole lot of Gatsby link. So what I will do, I'll just cross it. I'll start profiling. Now I will type and he'll react and then cross and stop it. So if you see uh, how many times my header got re-rendered. So my header got re-renders like six times because I wrote R-E-A-C-T for each and every uh, key press, my header got re-rendered. So this is something I need to work on. See, if you click on every single item, it will show you what are the things got re-rendered and, and what are the priority you see. It's showing the priority of immediate. That means we need to work on it because it is re-rendering multiple times on every single key press, right? So we need to work on it and we need to fix the number of re-renders that is hap happening and we need to optimize it. So if you hover on it, it is written as, if you hover on this, if it's written as priority of immediate. So to fix this, what I can do is basically I need to memoize whole lot of components even for uh, search as well as header. So one way you can do, you, you can use react.memo with the header itself. So what, what it will do is by memoization, just like we discussed within the previous slides, it will remember or it will cache the whole thing. If, if, the, if there is no props or states being changed on this particular header component, so nothing will re-render. Currently for us, something is re-rendering each and every time. That's why it is re like getting re-rendered so many times. So that is something we need to work and fix on. So every time you fix something within the component, come here and profile and check. This is a manual way just to optimize your component. So this is, this is uh, uh, something that you have to do manually when writing a component. So these are the all total five sample things that you can say to your interviewer when you are being asked like, how do you uh, like do performance optimization for your React app? So these are the total five ways, different ways you can see. Last one is something is manually you have to do. 